Recently, I posted a video explaining the new novel coronavirus. If you haven't checked it out, please watch the video somewhere on the top right corner of the screen. Today, I will be going over what happens if you get the new novel coronavirus. But first, I want to say that this video is not intended to spread anxiety and over sensationalize the severity of this new coronavirus. We will be looking into how the coronavirus affects the body, how it causes symptoms, spreads, and how your body fights it off. Uh, or in the worst case scenario, lead to death. Let me first say that the coronavirus is a family of viruses that causes disease in mammals and birds. The 2003 SARS pandemic was a coronavirus. Viruses are considered living and non-living and much smaller than cells. They're made up of cells, but they do have the ability to replicate in a different way than other organisms. Now to get the coronavirus, you first have to come in contact with it. There are multiple ways that you can come in contact with it. Through a person's infected respiratory secretity, like a cough or a sneeze, uh, physical contact with them, uh, to, or touching a surface that has the virus and then touching somewhere like your eye, your nose, or your mouth without washing your hands. Now the thing with viruses is that it carries some sort of genetic material, if it's like DNA or RNA. The coronavirus carries RNA, which has all the information that the virus needs to replicate. The genetic information of the virus is usually protected by a protective capsid. The capsid is then encased in an envelope. It usually looks like this. Now these little projectiles coming out of the surface are very important for what happens next. Once the virus comes in contact with your cells, it binds to the receptors on that cell. Then it basically finds a way in and has access to all your cells machinery. The coronavirus then hijacks your ribs maze and basically turns your cell into a virus making machine. This is why viruses are considered non-living because they often don't have the machinery to do this work and they need your body's cells to do it. Once the cell is full of this virus, it will eventually break out of the cell, often destroying the cell in the process. How many cells did I just say just then? Now once the viruses are out, they will infect more and more cells, repeating this process again and again. Now as your cells begin to get, get damaged and die, your body will sense this and trigger what is known as an immune response. Therefore, you will feel symptoms like cough, headache, sore throat, dizziness, runny nose, and fever. Now, the only problem with this is that we feel these symptoms all the time, especially dur during the flu season, and get or by getting or by even getting the common cold. Do doctors must run lab tests on respiratory specimens as well as blood work and blood tests to see if these symptoms are actually coming from this new novel coronavirus. If you are a healthy individual, your body will eventually realize there is a virus in you and will launch an attack. Your temperature increases, which what causes fever, but this helps your immune system function better and makes the environment more hostile for your virus, for the virus, actually. You may feel, you may actually create a lot of snot or phlegm, which makes it harder for the virus to attach to your cells and helps get rid of dead viruses and immune cells. Your bones may become sore and that is because they're making a lot of white blood cells. Now those with healthy immune systems should be able to fight this virus off within a few weeks. The problem primarily for those who, is for those who have weaker immune systems which are often the elderly or the ones that are really really young. This coronavirus has affected mostly the elderly and that's because we, as we become older our immune systems become less effective and they actually slow down. In a desperate attempt to save your body, your immune system can go into overdrive. In some severe cases, white blood cells may activate a variety of chemicals which can lead to fluid leaking into your lungs. This interrupts the transportation of oxygen into the bloodstream and this can eventually lead to suffocation or organ failure. Sometimes the virus isn't actually the cause of death. Often with a weakened and distracted immune system, other organisms such as bacteria can take advantage of the body causing more complication. As organs become to shut down, the whole body can too. It is actually worth saying that the numbers are relatively low. 40,000 people died along from the flu and over a million from heart disease. The, d the death rate, as I mentioned before in the last video, is around 2-3%. to 3%. Which is 
continually evolving, I would say. SARS was a coronavirus with a death rate of over 10%. Ebola in some regions have been up to 50%. Don't allow the news to make you panic. Be alert, not anxious, as I said it in the last video. Right now, we are seeing a lot of stigma towards Chinese people. It is important that we do not repeat those racist notions that happened in Canada during the SARS outbreak. On social media, we are seeing lots of posts and about people saying things like, this always happens in China, and relating to the food that we eat. But it's important to remember, Western food practices are what created the mad cow disease, and Western meat consumptions have created the big issues with antibiotic resistance. Bear in mind that I'm Chinese as well. We need to trust public health professionals and not overreact and definitely not use this as an excuse to be racist. Alrighty guys, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a like and chuck me a comment down below. If you have any questions, make sure to subscribe to my channel as well. If you have any questions, as I said, comment them down below. I'll be sure to answer you if I, if I actually see them. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.